was a bit Windows 10, okay? At this present minute, Windows 10 is what they call a technical preview. Which basically allows anyone to run it as an operating system and to be able to test it out and get the feel of it. Windows 10 is stable on my computer at the minute. But I did upgrade it from Windows 8.1. I've also installed it on a quad computer, 32 bit. I'm testing the 32 on the 64. Now, what I like about it so far? Well, Microsoft, in my opinion, are pushing the boundaries out because I believe that Windows 8 and 8.1, there was a lot of bad feedback from Microsoft. Or should I say, a lot of bad feedback from people that were using it. So Microsoft is releasing Cortana. Okay, Cortana. Some people using mobile phones have got voice activation on it. Now Cortana is going to be fantastic. Cortana will tell you a joke. So basically if you've got a microphone attached to your computer. Cortana will learn the habits that you use on your computer as the time goes on. To give you an example, if you use your computer to send email, and you say Cortana, email, Cortana will say, Cortana will search your contacts and say, who do you want to email? So say tax is in my email, and I say Cortana, email tax, just as an example. Cortana will say, okay, what do you want put in the email? So I'm going to say tax, I'm broadcasting next Saturday at 9 o'clock, can you make it? Or Cortana will ask me, she will write that down and ask me, do I want to send it? I say, Cortana, send email, and she'll send it. So that's one new feature that's going to be brought out in Windows 10. Another new feature will be a new browser. The browser will also have Cortana built into it, okay? And if you have a Windows 10 mobile device or Windows 10 tablet and you're using your computer, your Windows 10 operating system on your laptop or your desktop computer, you can load up your mobile phone and carry on where you left off. So they'll synchronize all the devices that's compatible with it. So if you forgive me a second, I would like to show you a couple of small clips here. Found one here with Windows 10 Cortana. How's it going, bros? And this, this will give you an idea. Super with me. So this is a speech uh, that's built into it, the new operating system. This is one of many. I also. 
honestly believe that Microsoft are really pushing the boundaries. Welcome to Fridays and Put Back. The best show on the entire universe. On a Friday, maybe. For this week's amazing episode, I'm gonna do something original and that no one ever else. We're gonna do a QA. I'm like a 40 year old mom trying to deal with her shit while a baby is being annoying. Jess, Jess, stop. I, for one, can't wait to see what questions you bros have for me uh, for this episode. Eat my ass. I would gladly eat your ass, but that's not a question, idiot. So no. Stop. Stop. I swear to God. Next question. Some Uh, just bear with me, Browns. Any other big... Okay, here we go. News? Do you mean like... Hey! That's not news, yet. Just so you know, I didn't say anything. Yeah, I wasn't suspecting you. You didn't need to with all these folks on the job. So it's official? Let's you and I make it official right now. Cortana, we're excited to welcome you to the PC. Down here on the taskbar, you'll see Cortana has a home. And that's because you could go there to click and type, but it's also a place where Cortana will occasionally pop up notifications and useful information. Because after all, she's personal and she knows things about you and she's there to be helpful. Now, remember Terry mentioned we're really trying to develop the natural interaction for all these devices. So of course, we can talk to Cortana too. And there's lots of things she can do that are helpful in terms of just answering quick questions. Hey Cortana, will I need a coat tomorrow? You could probably go without one. The forecast for tomorrow shows rain with a high of 50 and a low of 48. Okay, so that is one thing, one thing that Cortana can do. There's obviously quite a number of things she can do. If you're looking for a restaurant, and you say, Cortana, find me somewhere to eat within two miles. Cortana will search the internet in your location to find you the cheapest restaurant. So that's is why, friends, I'm getting slightly excited about Windows 10. And Windows 10 is also built in security. Windows 8.1, according to the technical research guys, is more secure than Windows 7. Believe it or believe it not. And what they're saying is Windows 10 is going to be even more secure. Plus, it's going to it's supposed to be run a lot faster than Windows 8.1. Okay, so they're also bringing out a new browser. They've changed the name from Internet Explorer. And they're going to call the browser Spartan. S P A R T I M. Spartan. Okay, Spartan. Okay, so let me check out this small clip of uh, the new browser Microsoft is supposed to be bringing out. Now, for quite a number of years, friends, I would personally advise anyone not to use Microsoft Explore browser. And that's because I have seen Microsoft browser 
from Windows 95, Windows 98, Windows 98 second edition, Windows Millennium, Windows 2000 server, Windows XP upgrade, home edition, uh, Pro, Windows 7, Windows 8 and 8.1 and so on. And I have never used Microsoft Explorer for many, many years. And the simple reason was because I found that it was very exploitable and not secure enough. And I think Microsoft are trying to bring the people back to using their browser so they change the name to Spartan. S-P-A-R-T-A-N. Okay, so let's have a look at this small clip here. And then I will load up my Skype tags if you want to come on because I don't want to jump too, head and, uh, too far in front of people to confuse them. So, I've introduced you to the uh, Cortana in the Windows 10 coming out. It's in the technical preview of the United States ISO. It's not available in the UK one. But they will be rolling it out as the time moves on to all the different countries. So now we're going to talk about the new browser that they're bringing out. Which will have Cortana built into it. And there's even more, but we'll not get it all covered tonight. There's even hot, uh, there's even more going on that, that will really, really excite us. Because it'll also link up with an Xbox game station. So Windows 10 is built for mobiles, tablets, laptops, desktops. You will have the option if you don't want to use a keyboard and you've got a multi-screen, to automatically switch to multi-screen no matter of a click. So I honestly believe, friends, out of all the operating systems, I think Windows 10 is going to be one of the best. I'm really, really surprised that Microsoft by far they're really pushing it. But don't take my word for it. Make up your own minds, of course. the right time to build a new browser for the modern web which will empower our next generation of Windows users on Windows 10. So today I'm excited to introduce you to a code name Project Spartan our new web browsing experience for Windows 10. So Project Spartan has a number of parts. Uh, first, it has a new rendering engine under the covers that's built to be compatible with how the web is written today. It has a new look and feel, which you see on the screen, that it's, fits right in with all this family of Windows 10 applications. And we're especially working on three significant new features to make you more productive on the web as you use Project Spartan. So I'm going to switch over for the last demo and let you take a look at Project Spartan running on the PC. Now, Project Spartan will not be in our very first Insider Builds. It's going to come a little later, and it'll come to the phone a little after that. Now, I'm going to show you it only on the PC today, but it is coming to the phone. The first thing you'll notice here is the new UI is streamlined. It fits in with the design language of Windows 10, and you can see the focus is on the content on the page. Um, but what I want to do is just give you a, a taste of these three significant new features we're working on to help people be more productive. The first one is about how you can interact with the web, and in particular, how you might communicate with other people about the web. So, you know, sometimes web articles come out and people want to post them to Facebook or they want to talk to other people about them. There's a lot of interaction that happens with content on the web. And this happened to our team about two weeks ago. And it happened when this article posted on the internet. This article comes out, and you can imagine, all of us are simultaneously horrified and kind of happy. 
Um, and so, of course, within our team, we communicated with each other about this article on the web, but we had Spartan. So we didn't simply send emails. Many of us had devices that work with pens or styluses, which I have here. So I'm going to switch into the first of these big three features, our note-taking mode. And you could imagine when I saw this, uh, I saw this and I said, ho oh, ho, baby. You know, sometimes you guys don't get it right, but sometimes you do. So, you know, we saw this and we were excited and we communicated with each other by marking up the web directly. And in this case, you know, I'm using a stylus, but I could do it with just my finger if I don't have a pen handy. If I want to make a little smiley face to show just how happy I am, that's possible too. And so now we have this way of expressing our thoughts right on the canvas of the web. It was interesting because this article came out and a bunch of people speculated, oh, I hope Microsoft isn't only doing this for devices with touch and pen. We're not. Um, so let me show you how we're going to support the mode of communicating about documents that millions of people have been doing for years and years with Word. They can click anywhere and add a comment using their keyboard. Hmm, this is a good idea. Um, so you could imagine, as we saw this article, some people had touch devices, some didn't. Everyone could comment on it using whatever form of input they had. You know, if it's touch, then it's natural. If it's a keyboard, then it's familiar. And so once I've marked up this page, there's a bunch of things I can do with it, of course. What we've done is we've frozen the web page. And that means that the content that might change on it is, is sort of snapped in time, but the links are still alive. I can then share that whole page or save that whole page for myself with my markup. Or I can go over here, I'm going to grab this clipping tool, and I'm going to just pull out this particular segment. You can see there I could save it to my OneNote because I keep a bunch of notes on things as I browse the web when I'm planning trips and so on. I could copy it to the clipboard. Or I could come right up here and use the system's built-in system for sharing to share that with other people. I could share it on Facebook. I could share it on Twitter. I could share it through my email experience in a consistent way. And now I have a rich canvas for not only expressing my thoughts on the web, but for sharing them with other people as well. So that's the first of our three significant end user features. The second thing that we tried to do was focus on the action of reading. People are I mean, the predominant action on the web is reading. You're reading and reading and reading and reading. And we felt if we could make that just a few percentage points better, then we'd significantly affect the overall productivity of people on the web. So there are a few things we did. The first thing we did was we looked at how we could take and sort of standardize a great way to read sites on the web, which are variant in their level of complexity and so on. So here's a, an article on Bon Appetit. I'm going to switch into my reading mode right here, and you'll see we discoverably make available a standardized format way for you to read stuff on the web. And you can personalize this to your liking so that you have a way to experience the wide range of content out there on a web in a way that might feel familiar to you. We didn't stop there. We also are added a reading list right into the core browsing experience. And of course, this will show up on whatever device you have. Um, I can add items to the reading list, it's a mobile experience that goes to whatever device I'm using. And we do one more thing, which is that we'll take the content in your reading list and save it offline. So if you find yourself stuck on a flight with no Wi-Fi and your mobile device is with you, well, Spartan will deliver you content to read wherever you are. And then the last thing that we wanted to do was we wanted to make sure that we supported the broadest set of content that's out there on the web. So we built in support for PDF files. And you see right here, I have a sample PDF file. I can add that to my reading list. I can mark it up with notes in the note-taking mode. It'll be saved offline and so on. So we're really trying to ensure that the widest range of content on the web is available for people to read wherever they are. OK, last thing. The third thing that we tried to do to make people more productive on the web was to give you a personal assistant to help you be productive on the web. So we're building Cortana right into Spartan. And the idea is that Cortana will show up at the right opportune moments to help you get things done. So there's some simple things she can do. So if I'm in my address bar and I'm curious about the weather, I can start typing weather, and Cortana will pop up and be helpful in simple situations like that. But because she knows you, she can help in more interesting and nuanced ways at times that might surprise you a little bit. So let's say it's my sister's birthday. It's not, but for demo purposes, let's imagine it's my sister's birthday. And her friends are having a surprise birthday party for her tonight. 
Remember my wife has that flight that's coming in that Cortana's tracking for me? Man, is my wife going to get here in time for us to make it to the party? I'm not sure. I might go to the Delta website to look up my wife's flight, but luckily Cortana knows that I'm tracking a flight because she's learning things about me all the time. And she can save me time and effort by popping up as I'm about to navigate somewhere on the web with, with what might be an answer to a question that I have in mind. So that's yet another example of how Cortana can help out. Similarly, as I'm browsing the web, Cortana can be right there at my fingertips, ready to let me know things about the pages I'm looking at. So you can see here, my sister's party is going to be at this restaurant called Cuoco. Um, my wife is gluten-free, dairy-free, and I'm on a crazy diet for New Year's. And so we have this concern about a restaurant and what's on the menu, and I wonder, like, how am I going to get there from here? You notice when I visit the restaurant site, Cortana has popped up right here to tell me she knows about this place because, again, Cortana is scouring the Internet, learning about people and places and getting smarter all the time. Um, she's telling me she's got directions, hours, and more. When I click, she shows up right here within the web browser to give me details about this place. She's telling me directions from where I'm at right now, and I can make those available on whatever device I'm on. She's, she can book a reservation for me. She shows me the hours. I can read reviews and so on. Remember my concern about the menu? Well, Cortana's there to help, too. She knows where the menu for this restaurant is on the Internet. She makes it readily available. And if I'm curious about ingredients as I scan down this, I know what a lot of these things are. I'm not so sure about rapini. I can just right-click and ask Cortana, and she's right there with an answer. Luckily, Rapini, only 2.7 grams of carbs, so that'll be okay for me on my New Year's diet. That's a quick look at Project Spartan. It's a new implementation of a web browsing experience built on our new universal platform, and it, go, it goes cross-device. It's great at productivity with note-taking right on the web, um, we're trying to tune the reading experience to make people more efficient, and it's the only browser with a personal assistant built right in. Okay, that is my look at Windows 10 and where we're at and a whole bunch of features.